simply singing the glories of Krishna and wandering from one forest to another in search of him. They knew that Krishna is not localized, but all-pervading. He is in the sky, he is in the water, he is in the air, and he is the super soul in everyone's heart. So the gopis began to inquire from all kinds of trees and plants about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is an instance of ecstatic madness on the part of the devotees. There's, I mean, there's so many wonderful stories in Srimad Bhagavatam about this. Like when Srimati Radharani was feeling tremendous separation from Krishna and uh, Krishna sent Uddhava to visit the gopis. And uh, Uddhava, you know, looks very similar to Krishna. And so uh, while he was giving this message from Krishna to the other gopis, Srimati Radharani began to speak with a bee. As if and she was talking to the bee because the bee is blackish. She says, you're, you're blackish like Krishna. Huh? And you are attracted to, just like Krishna, you are attracted to very sweet, beautiful flowers. But actually, you're the unreliable servant of an unreliable master. <laughs> She began to talk like this. Uh, so these, these kind of mad talks are a feature of uh, Srimati Radharani's ecstatic love, which is called Mahabhava. And uh, the, the section closes, Similarly, there are symptoms of diseases caused by ecstatic love. This condition is credited by learned scholars as being Mahabhava. This highly elevated condition is also called Divyonmada, or transcendental madness. Mm -hmm. Transcendental madness occurs when the limits of the mind are uh, broken by the intensity of ecstatic love. Uh, the poor mind just kind of gives up and and, and stops working, you know, because it, it can't... Uh, the, see, the mind, the, the problem with the mind is it's very weak. The mind is very easily overwhelmed by any kind of intensity. Uh, this is one of, the, one of the things that people don't like about devotional service. They're afraid because they know that it's very intense and that their mind can easily be overwhelmed by the, the intensity of the feelings that the devotee experiences. So people try to avoid really intense love. Uh, I've seen this in, many, in my own personal relationships, that when a relationship starts getting really intense and the loving feelings start becoming really, really strong, then uh, usually one person or the other in the relationship will back off or do something that breaks the mood. Uh, they can't stand having so much intense loving uh, feelings because the mind becomes overwhelmed and then they can no longer calculate how they're going to profit from their relationship with the other person. This is the material world. See, So people who have attachment to the material mind, they, uh, when they realize how intense devotional service is and how how strong the emotions are that the devotees feel they become very uh, uh, panicky they're like oh my god if I go into that I'm gonna lose my mind and I won't I won't be able to extract profit from these relationships <laughs> this, is, this is the underlying calculation uh, because they think that you do this a lot you like hang on to your mind, you try to stay sober and try, try not to get too carried away by the emotion because after all, <laughs> somebody might take advantage of me. Huh? Well, you know, we're not in Kazakhstan anymore, okay? Relax. Um, this is a, a feature of everybody in this material world uh, that they try to, they try to go into a, a relationship and make the other person fall in love with them. But they maintain their, their sober, uh, sober mood so that they can take advantage. This is very, very common in the material world. 
Uh, very, very common, you know. And that's why uh, the people nowadays, they think that to fall in love is actually a bad thing. Uh, but of course, if a person uh, closes off their heart, becomes hard-hearted like this, they, they can't experience the real nectar of life. They're going to miss the real beauty in life, because if there's any beauty in this world or in this life, it is because of loving relationships, loving emotions. And of course, Krishna is the perfect object of our love. So when we come in contact with Krishna especially, then it's appropriate to open up our hearts and really love. But if we have developed this, this habit, it's actually a kind of disease, you know of uh, keeping the heart closed and, and not giving in to ecstatic loving feelings, sentiments like that. Uh, what can I say? The person is going to miss the real benefit or the real beauty of this devotional service. So we should be beware of this. Now there's two more short sections and then we'll discuss. Forgetfulness. When Krishna was absent from Vrindavan and was staying in Matra, Srimati Radharani sent news to him that his mother, the queen of Braja, was feeling such separation from him that there was foam coming from her mouth like the foam on the shore of the ocean. And sometimes she was raising her arms like the waves of the ocean. And because of her intense feelings of separation, she was rolling on the ground and creating a tumultuous roaring sound. And sometimes she was remaining completely silent, like a calm sea. These symptoms of separation from Krishna are called apasmara, or forgetfulness. One completely forgets his position when he manifests these symptoms in ecstatic love. Another message was once sent to Krishna informing him that after he had killed Kangsa, one of Kangsa's demon friends had gone insane. The demon was foaming at the mouth, waving his arms and rolling on the ground. This demoniac demonstration is in relationship with Krishna in a ghastly humor. This mellow or flavor is one of the indirect relationships with Krishna. The first five kinds of relationships are called direct, and the other seven are called indirect. Now, um, unfortunately, these five and seven have not been defined yet at this point in the book. So, I mean, maybe they are in the complete Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. But uh, so far, in the nectar of devotion, which is a condensation, they haven't been given. So, of course, the five direct relationships are what? neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parental, and conjugal love. Okay. And then the seven, let's find the list here. Let's see, where is that? I'll wait until... Oh, actually, no, they have been given. But you know what? I don't remember where exactly. Qualities... Yes, yes, those. I think they're back here in chapter 20. Transcendental Mellow. Um, it talks about the five bhavas. And then, yeah, like wonder, chivalry, laughter. Um, where is that list? Compassion. Yes. Did you find it? In the introduction. Hoi. Introduction. Where? 
beginning, middle, end. The first paragraph of the introduction. Ah, okay, very good. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the reservoir of all rasas or relationships, which are called neutrality, passive adoration, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, conjugal love, those are the, the, the direct ones, and then comedy, compassion, fear, chivalry, ghastliness, wonder, and devastation. Those are the seven indirect. So, now that we've found that, some way or other the demon must have 